Hey everyone, Chef Jacob here. Today we're going to be showing how to install the Airy 12209 stepper drivers on the SKR 1.3 Big Tree Tech. This is the exact same board that I currently have on my X5SA uh, that I'm rebuilding right now. Um, this is just a spare board that I have, just so I can show you without it being uh, stuck in the printer how to do everything. Um, and then I will go over not only the installation, uh, where you have to put the pins, uh, the jumpers on the pins. Um, in a future video, I will be showing how to set up Sunjellus Homing because it's something I'm interested in on my Core XY. Um, for today, I'm just going to go a quick glance over it. I'm not actually going to do it. Uh, and then we are also going to show on the uh, Marlin configuration on the computer uh, what steps you have to change, um, assuming that you already have 2208s uh, set up. It's going to be very similar regardless. As long as you have a profile already built for your printer, um, you'll just go in and make certain changes. The only other main change you'd have to make between the 2209s and Say for example if you had a DRV8825 or other stepper driver on there, you might have to fiddle with the uh, directions of the stepper motors. And then also we are going to be doing this in UART mode. Uh, previously I had it set up in standalone, which is when you'd be using these little trim pots. Right, see if I can get it to focus. It's the little trim pots right on the top uh, to adjust the current. In uh, standalone you have to adjust it on the driver itself. With uh, UART mode, you control it through your firmware. Um, I'll be showing that on the computer again. Um, we're going to just stick with the stock, which is going to be the 800. Uh, I'm going to do 1000 on the Z because I'm actually running a splitter for a dual Z. Um, or you could easily just keep them all at 800 if you want to worry about temperature. And uh, run the fifth one on E1 and convert it in your firmware over to control your second Z motor but these are have no problem handling uh, two with a splitter, so that's just how I'm going to do it because that's how I already had my 2208s. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, as you can see, there's currently two pins in the top right on each one of these. Um, the last one doesn't count because we're not going to use that one. This is how you would run it in standalone. You remove every other pin, you remove these ones, because those have to do with your essentialist homing. And then you remove all the pins that were up here. Um, the only pin you're still gonna, or a jumper you're still gonna wanna leave on the pins is this one right here. And that's just how you switch between your power source. When you're uh, programming the board, you wanna have it set to USB. And then when you're gonna use it, you'll set it to run on the uh, power supply, which is like that. Um, so again, this is how you do standalone mode where you would then go in and use the trim pots to adjust the voltage. Um, we are not going to be using that, but just real quick, um, it would be this direction, and you would just run your leads for your voltmeter. You'd set it to down to the 2, and you'd just read the voltage between your negative uh, power supply in and then there's this little pin on the top of the driver you can either use that um, or I usually just go right off of the trim pot uh, it's good if you just round the clamp to the little screwdriver that it came with uh, and then you can turn it like that so we're going to be doing it in UART mode so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and remove all of these pins um, and then I will show you where to replace them at You can see we have no pins left on any one except for the last spot that we're not using, so that again doesn't matter. 
and then you're going to want to replace them I'll show you again on the other camera so it focuses better on the red pins in front of each one and they're labeled as you are so we'll go ahead and do that right now alright so like I said you're going to want to go ahead and put the pins on these red ones and you can see right behind them they're labeled as UART the X UART, Y UART and then over here is Z we're not going to be worried about Z2 which is going to be the one on the end so we're just going to do X, Y, Z and also the extruder And then this last one is for the extruder, E0. And then we're going to leave E1 blank and not mess with those pins as well. Okay, and then that's all you have to do to switch it to UART, other than the changes I'm going to show you in the firmware. Um, we're going to want to make sure, it's very important, I've actually smoked a board like this before, that on the separate motor it has, uh, on the driver, it has enable and ground pins, and you want to make sure that those are lined up at the board. On the top of the SKR you can't see that but on the back of the 1.3 and the 1.4 it is labeled so you can see the top right is enabled and the top left is ground so you're just going to make sure you have it lined up that same way so the ground is going to be this back spot right here look for where it says ground on the stepper right there so we want to make sure that we put it in this direction Give it a gentle push down, and we'll repeat that for the other three. All right, now the other three are in. We have four 2209s installed on the SKR 1.3. Um, now, one of the main advantages and the main reasons I'm switching between the 2208s and the 2209s, because I have everyone on both, um, and I've really enjoyed the 2208s. They do a great job quieting down the printer. Um, but I am interested in the sensorless homing, which I'll be doing again, like I said, in a future video. Um, the other advantage is that it offers all the same features as like a 2130, the 2208, all the other 2100 series combined into one chip, um, as well as these are able to handle more current, which means that they'll run cooler, or if you're not worried about the temperature, you could turn them up a little bit to get more torque, depending on what kind of steppers you have. That being said, with the temperature, it is really important that you put the heat sinks on. You want to center them on the silver pad, on the gold pad. Um, again, you're gonna to have to peel off the sticker or it won't stick. I'm just showing you want to put it right over the little dotted area because the back of that is where the chip is located, and that's gonna be the hottest part of the stepper drivers. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Just try to get the stickers off. And there's a little bit of like thermal compound already on here. Sometimes it's a little tricky, but peel it right off. You want to make sure that the white part stays on. And that's going to be your thermal thermal sticker. And you're like I said, you want to put it on here, centered right over the square of dots. Make sure it's not touching any pins because that'll short out your stepper and it could, it'll at a minimum that uh, it could fry the stepper driver or um, you could burn out the whole board so again it's blue to start with and you have to kind of pick at it a little bit to get it to start there we go bring it in the, the direction doesn't really matter I just like it to keep it consistent just for aesthetics and then again push it down firmly make sure they're securely placed um, I do also have uh, a fan in my control box, so there is a little bit of actual air movement besides just the passive cooling here, um, and I've never had an issue with them running too hot with the 2208s, and like I said, the 2209s do typically run a little on the cooler side, so that shouldn't be an issue as long as I maintain that fan. Go ahead and put them on the rest of them, and then I'm pretty sure we're just going to hop over to the firmware side. Alright, now the heat sinks are all installed. I just want to go over real quick. On most other boards, um, I don't personally have experience with yet, but um, other boards besides the SKR 1.3 and 1.4, you'll actually need these jumpers that Aerial Move is nice enough to include. 
um, and it's much more of a process and that's actually why you have these additional pins on the stepper drivers. We don't need those at all with the SKR boards because the wiring for that, the circuitry for that is already built right into the board and that's what these pin sets are for in the front. So we would need these jumpers to run in here to connect it to UART mode but since it's built to the board that's literally all we need to do is install these jumpers. And then also you would use the jumper wire cables um, if you wanted to work on sensorless homing but again SKR thought about that and now there's these red pins right here and you would just short out each one X S T Y S T um, you can do Z um, for now I'm just gonna do X and Y but that'll be in a future video and I'll play with Z and then you don't need for the extruder um, so you're just gonna put the little jumpers onto those first two pins for X and Y or if you were gonna do X Y and Z you put it on all three and then the rest of the changes are in the firmware there's no need for the jumper cables at all with the SKR boards which I think is really cool. That's the main reason that I use the SKR board. Um, I'm pretty good with hardware, but having to do it excess wiring that isn't necessary, it gets in the way. The extra wires end up, you know, slowing down airflow, which then can lead to heating issues. So if the circuitry is already built into the board, to me that seems like the best way to go, especially for the price and the fact that you're getting a 32-bit board. Um, so SKR is the way I go. You have to be careful. Um, I have burned out a few of them, even with these fuses, um, hence the spare um, that I have in running right now. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's the reason that I go with SKR. You can use whatever you want. Um, these steppers will work with, stepper drivers will work with any board that takes interchangeable stepper drivers, and you can change the firmware settings. But that's why I use SKR. All right, now to the firmware. All right, so you're going to want to go ahead and open your Marlin configuration. Uh, in whatever editing software you use. Um, personally, I use Atom for Marlin 2.0. And in this configuration, I have 2.013. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna search for the current stepper drivers. Uh, the ones I have already, you can see here, are 2208 in standalone mode. Uh, and we are just going to change it to 2209. Uh, leaving off standalone allows us to convert them to UART mode. And we're just going to go ahead and change all of them. I'm doing it on the E extruder as well. Uh, so I'll be changing X, Y, Z, and E all to 2209. Alright, the next step for setting up UART mode is you're going to want to go to the configuration advanced.h file. Uh, and then we're going to search for your current settings. Uh, easy way to find it, the default is 800. So I just typed in uh, Control F to pull up the search bar and searched for 800 and it was I believe the second or third choice when you go through the uh, through the tab. Uh, so what you're going to want to go ahead and do is leave these on default for now. You can go ahead and change them later depending on your stepper drivers and how much weight you have to move with your particular printer. Um, I am going to go ahead and change the Z to a thousand to account for the second motor on the same stepper driver. Uh, and then I can adjust from there as needed. That is going to be all of the changes you need to make in your firmware, assuming you already had 2208 set up. Uh, again, if you had a different stepper driver enabled, you would have to potentially change the direction of the stepper drivers. Uh, you may still have to do that now, depending on uh, your current setup. Or even if you're building a computer or a printer from scratch, that would be the, a change you'd want to look at. Um, you're just going to want to leave it configured as it is. It's easy enough to go back in and change it uh, once you test it. So just leave it however it is default or from your prior uh, configuration. Uh, going to want to save it um, and then add it onto the printer board. And from that point, you can just go ahead and test it, see how the current works, make sure they're spinning in the right direction, uh, and then you'll really be uh, you'll be on your way to printing much quieter and uh, very smoothly. Full disclosure, everyone did send me these stepper drivers for the purpose of review. I have all opinions that are my own, and I was willing to accept them for the purpose of review because I had already used their 2208 stepper drivers, and I was very pleased with them. So I am willing and able to give an honest opinion for the 2209s uh, going forward, and there will be future videos coming up where I test the, the sensorless homing. 
I'm really excited to try to remove the end stop switches, which is that's one less thing that can potentially go wrong. Um, so we'll, we'll be seeing that in a future video. All right, thank you guys, and I really hope you liked it. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share it with your friends. And as always, please leave comments in the bottom what you'd like to see in the future and anything you'd like to see changed. All right, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed the meal. All right, bye.